unbelievable. Like just seeing the growth and seeing how many athletes are involved. How did this start? How did this begin? How, how much do you know about blockchain and NFTs and crypto? Who approached you? How did this all come together? So basically, uh, these normal lads, working lads, you know, some were involved in crypto, some were just like businessmen, approached me uh, through a mutual friend of the business who's now one of the co-founders. Uh, back in 2021, and basically they, were, uh, they approached me and they were talking about you know, NFTs and stuff like that. We'd like to release one with you and we can guarantee this much and stuff like that. And I was like, sort of, I went away and I'd heard about NFTs. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, am I okay to start driving? Yeah. Go okay, for it, Darren. Please, so, be uh, Please be careful. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. No, I'm actually going to put the phone up, actually. Let's, let's go back. Can you still see me? I can. Put the phone up. That better like that, yeah? Uh, you're a little dark. Is it dark? It's gives what? Just give me one sec, yeah. No worries. You, Class. This is a, this report. is a, this is a classic Darren Till interview. I expect nothing less. <laughs> one sec. I will literally be thirty seconds and I'll be stopped. Okay. You do that. You do that. It's a classic Darren Till interview. It is. It? This is part of your gimmick. It's like if anyone in, in the media interviews you, it's going to be. You know, in, in one of your spare rooms in your house while you're sitting on the floor <laughs> or it's going to be on your couch or it's in your car. Wild, right. <laughs> right. Good to go. Okay. So please, please continue. You were telling me. Yeah, that's great. You're, you're well lit, stable. That's what we want here. Um, yeah. So, so as you were saying, the foundation, so, yeah. the formation of Block Asset, tell me. So they, they, they approached me and they were like, uh, we'd love to do an NFT. We can guarantee this much and stuff like that. So when I went away, I told them, let me think about it and stuff like that. Uh, I'd heard about NFTs. And the first thing I'd heard about was that LeBron James had sold like an, an NFT, or, uh, his own NFT or something like that for like $1.7 million. And I was like, what is this NFT? So I went in and done my own little bit of research. And I was like, wow, so it's a piece of art. It's digital. You know, it's like normal art, but you have it on your phone. It's verified on the blockchain and stuff like that. It was very complex. So I had to, like, for a few days, work about, like, like do me, do me research and, like, sort of fully understand it. And I got it to an extent, but it was very tough. Like, even now, I think people don't understand it. But, you know, the world sort of moved on from, from NFTs. But at that point, I went back to them and I was like, listen, guys, I've got a proposal. I've got an offer. I'm a guy with a lot of influence and a lot of contacts in the industry that users are trying to break into. I was like... Instead of me just releasing an NFT, because I was like, bring me on as like a founder, bring me on as a partner and stuff like that. Let's build the business. You know, it only just been started. Then I was like, you know, I can really do things here. Let's 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 all go in as equal, as equal partners and let's really, you know, let's give it a let's have a stab at it. Let's give it a shot. So they were like, yeah, they loved it, loved the pitch. I loved their pitch, stuff like that. So we sort of went in together. As soon as that happened, I was through my contact lists on Instagram, on, on in WhatsApp, stuff like that. I was DMing everyone. I was getting everyone on board. I was really like working. I, I believed in the pro the project, uh, the project. So then at the time we uh, we did we did our first like NFT collection, uh, and it was the Legend Collection. So it was basically Wayne Mooney, Mike Bisping, uh, Alexander Ovechkin, uh, Joan Alomu, uh, and Muhammad Ali. And basically, we did a big launch in Times Square. Bisping was there. Adam Cattrall and Nick Pete were there as they were presenting it and stuff like that. And we raised $5 million. So, like, I Incredible. mean, we'd only, we'd only been going, like, what, like, four months, something like that, five months. And we'd done that. So, like, obviously, we brought uh, Rooney on as like a, a mini, um, um, we gave him a little mini, mini little bit of equity. We gave Big Spring a little bit of equity and uh, stuff like that. We paid all the athletes out and we were able to pay the Muhammad Ali family out and the uh, Joan Alomu family and stuff like that. And from there, it just like we started just onboarding more users, onboarding more athletes. We were releasing more NFTs. Then that was when we, we made a big approach when I sort of spoke to Hamzat and his manager and I was like, you know, there's, there's something here. So we did a big partnership with them and not just the Smash Bros series. Obviously, you've seen how that did and stuff like that. And 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 from there, it's just been an all on like roller coaster. It's actually been quite stressful at times, more than more than 
the good, but I swear, like the the, the stuff we've we, we've been doing, like we've got Alex Pereira on board now, Gilbert Burns. We're we're gonna be doing an NFT drop for Masvidal in Miami, stuff like that. We released our own coin, you know, it, at the time when when crypto was sort of up. Obviously, it's gone down now, but we all expected to go back up. And uh, at one point, we had like 125 uh, staff. Like we had people, we had like designers working for us from India. You know, there was people all over Europe, like top guys in the industry of crypto, like helping us with the coin, helping us with our, our you know, our advertising, our marketing strategy, stuff like that. The the NFT side, you know, I mean, we're even like trying to talk to the UFC about you know onboarding with them and stuff like that and all these but we just released really, we just announced that we're we're on the Chili's platform now which they they one of the like top 10 biggest cryptos in the world the platform and stuff like that so I mean it's all started from my little back, back, back bedroom where we all met so I mean I'm super super proud of, of it amazing I love that I love hearing stories like that um especially when fighters can figure out ways of having other revenue streams outside of the fight game, outside of actually having to like physically fight yourself. So here's the question though. So if it's going so well, like, you know, when I hear figures like $5 million being yeah. kind of, you know, raised at that New York event, do you even need to fight anymore? Can you just like focus 100% on block asset moving forward and not worry about putting yourself through physical damage and, and competing in combat sports and maybe just take two years out to look after your health and well-being, focus on block asset, and then when you're ready, come back to the UFC? Isn't that a better plan? Okay, well, I'm going to come at you with some some of the factors from my point of view now, as you've just said, and I, you know, I'll speak about them. So number one, it's, it's never as it seems. And I, I, you know, like, like people will say a lot of things like, oh yeah, we we made this much and we did this and, you know, we're making this much. But the thing is in business, especially a business like this, a, a startup tech company, you know, when you're speaking of figures, like let's say, you know, we are like 500 grand and 5 million. There's the stuff that you have that has to go back into the business to build the business to what we eventually need to get to. It's not cheap, and 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 people working in a, in a crypto space are not cheap either. So yeah, it sounds tasty, five million dollars, but after we've paid the athletes and paid the fees and stuff like that, you know, at that time, us as us as like as partners and shareholders, we're all left with like a nice little present. Oh, there's that. Oh, we've made that. You know what I mean. And then the rest obviously goes back into the business. So, a lot of money what we have made inside the block asset has basically just been put back into the business to obviously build build it bigger. So, I mean, no, I couldn't. I couldn't just sit back now for the next two years. Even though it would be nice, but there's another thing such as like if I did sit back for two years now, I feel like skills, health, and all that stuff would deteriorate more in the fight game. You can't just come back after a two-year layoff. It doesn't work like that. You know, you'd have to stay active, sharp, you know, the body and the mind, stuff like that. So there's that. And obviously, you know, it, it right now, block asset, as, as much as it needs me, it needs all these guys on the day-to-day -to, -day to just keep building, especially given the space that we're in. Like right now, the crypto uh, the crypto market, you know, it's probably at its worst point it's, it's ever been at. And it's probably going to stay that way now for the next 12 months. You know, hopefully not. Uh, you know, the, the, the forecasting in 24 months that it'll go back up. But who knows how long's a piece of string, stuff like that. So, you know... Uh, we were having to, and 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 the people who work for us are having to work, you know, even harder to just make sure that block asset stays afloat because we're in a, a very difficult time now. With the, you know, the world is in turmoil. Not a lot of people have got money, stuff like that. So you know, it all sounds well and dandy, five million dollars and five hundred grand here and there, but it all it, it just it's not like I grab it and go, oh, got this now going. You know, we make decisions to make sure the business can still grow. So we put it back into the business selfless, selflessly. And I think that's what most big businesses who are successful nowadays do. And, 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 and us as directors and founders, we're always putting in little clips of like how Netflix was built and how McDonald's and stuff like that. And we're trying to learn and, you know, cause like, cause the, the, the lads who, who were all co-founders with myself are all just normal lads from Liverpool. It's not like these guys came from different sides of the earth. Like, the athletes you see on the block asset roster, the, you know, they're all with us. These just these normal lads from Liverpool. Block asset was built out of a little warehouse in Liverpool. So yeah, it is it is a big thing, and I haven't spoke about it this in depth uh, until now. So 
So I hope people are watching it, and I hope a lot of people out there just see me not only as the fight, but now they can see me as bloody hell. Darren Till's got a little bit of a brain on him. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think, share this with your friends. And if you really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more amazing content planned. So jump along for the ride.